So what if you want to make diols? If we do dihydroxylation of an alkene, we can get vicinal diols. We can either do anti-dihydroxylation or syn-dihydroxylation. Do you remember the reagents to do these? We could do anti-dihydroxylation using a peroxyacetic acid like MCPBA followed by acidic conditions that goes through an epoxide intermediate. Do you remember another way to get an epoxide? going through a um, halohydrin. And we can do the syn dihydroxylation using a catalytic amount of osmium tetroxide replenished with a stoichiometric amount of either NMO or T-butyl hydroperoxide. So dihydroxylation gives us these vicinal diols. What if we wanted our hydroxyl groups further apart? For instance, what if we wanted 2,4-pentane diol? We could get this 2,4-pentane diol by reducing 2,4-pentane dione. And we could do this by catalytic hydrogenation, H2PT. Palladium or nickel would work as well. Sodium borohydride and methanol would also work. Finally, we could also use lithium aluminum hydride and water. It bears mentioning that since we are reducing two carbonyls, we would need two equivalents of hydride nucleophile. So we need two equivalents for the sodium borohydride or for the LAH. Here's another nifty way to get a diol. When you reduce a lactone, this is a lactone. It's a cyclic ester. Well, when you reduce a lactone, the ring opens to give you a diol with the same number of carbons as there were to begin with. And uh, to do this, you use excess LAH followed by water. Let's look at the mechanism. In the first step, the aluminum hydride does nucleophilic attack on the carbonyl carbon which exceeds its octet, so we change a pi bond to a lone pair. And now the carbonyl oxygen has become this alkoxide. In the second step, uh, the CO double bond reforms, and that causes the loss of a leaving group here. And the loss of the leaving group gives us the opening of a ring. You can see that the number of carbons is conserved, and you can also see um, where each carbon is going when the ring opens. In our third step, another equivalent of aluminum hydride ion performs a nucleophilic attack at the carbonyl oxygen, exceeding its octet and turning it into an alkoxide. Now we have this dialkoxide, and uh, this is where the water comes in. So finally we have proton transfer where our alkoxides take protons from the water molecules. And this would really happen in two steps, but I'm just drawing it as one, because who has the time for that? And we end up with our diol. And there it is for you, all on one screen, a diol from the reduction of a lactone. Four steps. One, nuke attack. Two, loss of a leaving group and ring opening. Three, nuke, of, nuke, nuke attack again for proton transfer, and five proton transfer. Again, the proton transfer would happen in two steps, but who cares?